I can bet you heard about Thor and Loki from Norse mythology, but what about Slavic paganism, an obscure religion of the ancient Slavic people that are spread throughout Europe from the freezing forests of the east to the sunny beaches of the south, featuring Perun, the mighty god of thunder, who is in a constant war against Veles, the evil trickster and the god of the underworld? Or how about the supreme deity Rod and how he created a world out of a giant golden egg? Long story. Enter your communist apartment, grab your compote and burek, it's time to introduce you to the mythology of the Slaws. The ancient Slaws were networks of loosely connected tribes that spread all over Europe in the 6th century. Some settled in the south, while others went east and west, encompassing many diverse areas of Europe, ranging from sunny beaches and tall mountains to cold tundras. This resulted in each tribe having a similar but different culture and religion. Of course, Christianity had its interesting influence as well, which you will see at the end of the video. Let's start at the beginning of the universe with Rod, the primordial creator. He was asleep in a giant golden egg, drifting around in the vast nothingness, when suddenly Rod broke out of the egg, immediately creating Lada, the goddess of love and the bringer of light. With her help, he used rainbows to cut pieces of the eggshell and create the world. He separated the skies from the oceans and created the tree of life, that further separated the world into three realms. Love, the home of the gods, Yov, the home of mankind, and Nav, the underworld and realm of the dead. Rod then created the gods and breathed life into them, allowing them to control the world. He also created Zemun, a giant cow whose milk fed the young gods. In fact, she had so much milk that it spilled over and created the Milky Way. And at the end, he created the first humans from the branches of the life tree. There is also a different version of the story, where reality is actually the dream of Svarog. He doesn't have physical control over the world, but he can influence the thoughts of various gods. And the world is supposed to end once he wakes up. I find this version more interesting. Up next is the mightiest of all the Slavic gods, Perun, the god of Thunder, whose chariot is pulled by ferocious bulls during his constant war against Veles, his arch enemy and the evil god of the underworld. You can compare Perun to Thor or Zeus, as they originate from the same ancient deity of the Indo-European people, called the Sky Father. The war between Perun and Veles begins when Veles steals Perun's cattle. And this makes Perun extremely mad, he's uncontrollable and strikes the ground with thunderbolts trying to hit Veles. On the other hand, Veles is constantly hiding among trees, houses or people, and shapeshifting into all kinds of animals. However, Perun eventually gets him and sends him back to the underworld. Next is Morana the Slavic goddess of death and winter, the symbol of hunger, cold, disease and pain. To those who feared death, she appeared like a decayed old hag, but to those who didn't, she was a beautiful pale lady with long black hair. And it's interesting that she wasn't always the goddess of death. Morana was born to Lada, the goddess of light and love, and Svarog, the god of fire. And Morana herself was regarded as a homemaker and the goddess of fertility. So, what changed? It's said that Morana seduced Dashbuk, the god of the sun. But he got bored and found another lover, which pissed off Morana, and she poisoned him. However, Dashbog quickly recovered and burned Morana at the stake, banishing her to the underworld. And the ancient Slaws believed Morana manages to pull Dashbog into the underworld at the start of winter, holding him hostage until spring when he manages to break free. As well as all the interesting gods, Slavic paganism is full of monsters and spirits. Here are a few of the most famous. The Rusalkas or Vilas were young women that met a tragic end, usually by drowning, and it's said that their spirits continue to live by the lake or river they drowned in. They dance and sang songs, luring men near the body of water so they can drown them. Another version of the story says they are helpful spirits that assist fishermen. 
The Leshen is the guardian of the forest, it has the head of a deer and glowing eyes. Its skin is covered in tree bark and it perfectly blends in with the environment. This spirit has control over animals in the forest and punishes those who harm them or enter the forest without respect and proper rituals. The Baba Yaga is an old witch with a hooked nose and iron teeth. She lives in a hut that stands on two chicken legs and has powerful magical abilities. And she helps those who are lost in the forest if they pass her test, but eats those who don't. One ancient Slavic ritual that survived to this day is the burning of a Morana doll. Just as Dashbok burned Morana, ancient Slavs replicated this by burning a doll that looked like her. The point of this ritual was to be protected from Morana's influence and to make winter go away faster. Fun fact, I used to do this as a kid. We dressed up in costumes, made a doll with our teacher, paraded it around, ate some cookies and eventually burned it. Another tradition that got adopted by Christianity is Zadushnitz. The ancient Slavs believe that when people die, they go to Nav, the underworld. However, a few times a year, the spirits of those people came back to our world, and they had to be greeted properly. Fires were lit on cemeteries, food was prepared, and special pieces of wood were placed on crossroads so the spirits can find their way back. In exchange, the spirits of ancestors provided wisdom and favors for their descendants. Today, this tradition is celebrated by many Christians that visit the graves of loved ones and light a candle for their soul. The Kupalo night was celebrated on the shortest night in the year, the summer solstice, it's basically midsummer. Huge fires were lit on hilltops, which was meant to strengthen the participants of the rite and ensure the fertility of the fields as well as animals. There was dancing and singing around the fires, while leaping across them was meant to ensure protection against bad energy. Unmarried Slavic women would make a braid out of flowers. Let it float down the river, and if an unmarried man found a freight and returned it to the woman that made it, they would become a couple. Finally, every ancient Slavic family had its own patron god that was meant to protect them, and was celebrated on a specific day in the year, usually by a feast. This tradition has only survived through Serbian Orthodoxy, where each family has its own Slava. It's celebrated by a feast, usually hosted by the oldest man in the family, that passes it down to his oldest son. For centuries, the customs of ancient Slavic people lived only through Christianity. However, as of lately, Slavic paganism has been making a comeback mostly in Poland, where people have been gathering in forests and performing many ancient rituals. Slavic paganism is an amazing mythology, rich with history and full of amazing stories, and I can only hope I interest you into learning more about this belief system. Thank you for watching the video, like and subscribe.